Welcome back to the home lab and I've got an interesting little electronics build to share with you today. What we're going to look at is a 3x3 three three Nixie tube matrix display. So what I thought I'd do is take you through the process that I use to put this little thing together. So we've got a range of skills, some mechanical skills to build the perspex bits, and then we've got the electronics um, to build the circuit board that drives the Nixie tubes. So let's get started. So um, I had to go and find some Nixie tubes and some bases for them. And uh, a lot of the stock that can still be found now is in sort of Russia and that sort of area, which is a bit tricky at the moment. But I managed to get in touch with a chap in Ukraine who had them. So um, let's have a look at a uh, Nixie tube. And I think these were actually brand new. So um, this is um, a very early kind of Nixie tube and it's quite a large one. And to explain how it works, well, it's actually not that difficult. It behaves like a, a neon bulb. So inside it is a low pressure gas and that is mainly neon. And um, if you pass um, an electric field across neon, in other words, you have two separated electrodes and you have a voltage that's high enough, in this case, about 200 volts, you ionize that gas. And if you ionize it, there'll be a point where the electrons are ripped off uh, the neon atoms and they'll recombine. And when they recombine, you'll get that classic orange color of light. So inside here is um, an anode, which is the grill at the front that's very positive. And then behind it, individually insulated, uh, some very, very fine wires are the shapes of numbers. Um, so there'll be a vertical wire that's the number one, um, a two, and a two that's upside down, actually. I'm not quite sure why they did that to keep uh, manufacturing simple. Um, the two uh, upside down becomes a five, a three, etc. And they stack those on top of each other. They're not in order, um, so you don't get um, sort of shadowing um, effects. So they've tried to stack them so um, when one is lit up, somewhere near the back, the ones in the front uh, don't block the light from those. So to get it to work, loads of pins at the back. Um, you can plug it into a socket and then um, to light a particular um, metal number in here in the stack, we make the anode at the front 200 volts and then we connect the pin that goes to that particular metal number to ground. If it's held down to ground, there'll be a potential difference across it of about 200 volts. The gas will ionize and very, very close to the metal uh, number, um, the atoms will recombine. The electron will go back on and give out a flash of that very characteristic neon color, that orange light. So if we can switch uh, each individual metal number down to ground, we can light different numbers and we do that one at a time. And in my system, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ground pins in as random a fashion as I can. So the numbers don't count down, um, you know, nine, eight, seven, six, or down to zero. Um, they uh, go maybe one, four, nine, zero. So it all looks a bit randomized. Now to create the randomized pattern, I need to do some fairly snake-like wiring at the back of the tube on the bases that we've got. So it's that I'll show you now. So let's have a look at the build process now. So the first thing I wanted to do was to buy a little high voltage power supply to check uh, the Nixie tubes are working. And as you know with me, I'll always do stuff on breadboard first to check it's working. And when the Nixie's tubes arrived, it was really quite exciting. I could get one wired up and see if it really worked. And then it was a case of thinking, how am I gonna build the item? And um, the first thing to do was to work on a circuit and get that working. 
and then uh, the incredibly tedious job of building the perspex parts and I needed large holes in the perspex uh, to hold the Nixie tubes and the sockets and then I needed lots and lots of small holes to hold the whole thing together and also um, to hold the mounting screws for the sockets so there was an awful lot of drilling and filing and things going on but finally I had the perspex sheets in the form that I wanted um, so it was time to put the whole thing together. So let's have a quick look at the circuit board I built uh, to drive the individual Nixie tubes. So a bit of a cheat here. Um, I bought a power supply on eBay and this is the high voltage side. So this will provide about 200 volts to the anodes of the Nixie tubes. And then to light up a particular uh, number in the Nixie tube, we need to make that cathode uh, ground. We need to bring it down to ground. So the rest of the circuit does two things. Um, it counts through each number and it makes sure that that particular number is grounded so it lights up. So, um, 555 timer, you know how much I love those. Okay, counting every second with the components that are needed to do that. Ferrub resistor, so we can change the rate that it's going to count at. And I think later on we'll turn that right up so the numbers flash really rapidly. Uh, then we've got a decade binary counter. So this counter will count up 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, um, etc. But it does it in binary. So we've got some LEDs here that show the binary counting. So yeah, just give it a second. There we go. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0. OK, so um, it's counting up in binary that then feeds into our uh, really special uh, Russian chip, which is a Nixie driver and that converts binary. So the binary zero, the binary one, the binary two, etc., to one of the pins on it being grounded. So it grounds a specific pin when it's zero, a different pin when it's one, a different pin when it's two, etc. So what this will do is it will pull down specific pins on each Nixie tube to zero and that will light up that specific number. And it will go around and do that in order. Now normally you'd use this to drive one Nixie tube, but what I'm going to do is let it drive all nine of them. So let's have a look at the back of the Nixie tube board and you'll see wires going everywhere here. But if you remember, what I want to do is I want them all to light up at the same time, but I don't want any two possibly to display the same number. Otherwise, they'll all look similar. I want it to look really random in the way that it counts. So what I've done is I think it's the red wire. I've wired all the anodes together because um, all the tubes uh, have to have a working anode. And then the individual numbers are the cathodes. And what I've done, because I want all of them on all of the time, is I've wired cathodes together. But instead of saying, let's have the number one on all the time on all of them. So wire cathode one to cathode one to cathode one. I've kind of tried to randomize my wiring. So when we bring a cathode down to zero and it lights up, it might be number one on this one, four on that one, eight on that one, nine on this one, zero on that one. I haven't done a particular pattern here in case any of you thinking I've I've hidden some magic number in it or something. I've just tried to go to different pins. I think I've got one more. Here we go. I've still got one more wire to go in. So hopefully when we switch this on, um, the cathodes will be randomly arranged in my wiring. So at any one moment when it's on, if I was to take a photograph, each tube will be indicating a different number. So let's have a quick look at the Nixie tube driver circuit. And again, don't worry too much if you're not brilliant on circuit diagrams. I'll break it down into particular blocks so it makes sense. So to begin with, we've got the high voltage power supply here and we just power that up and it gives about 200 volts to the anode of every Nixie tube. OK, the Nixie tubes will be sitting there waiting to have a particular number, a particular cathode dragged to zero. So that's what this lot does. So we've got our 555 timer, associated electronics here or components here and a variable resistor here to make it count. Uh, to begin with, it's going to count seconds and then we'll 
change that variable resistor so it counts really rapidly. Our LED here on the output of the timer so we can see it going flash, flash, flash. Always a good idea so I can just see that it's working. Feeding into our decade counter. OK, so every time this gets a pulse, this will count up one in binary. And then because we've grounded certain pins, it will get to the number we want it to. And then it will stop counting and reset. Out of that comes our four binary data lines. OK, so that will be the binary word. Um, so they'll be all zero or they'll be one and three zeros or for the number seven, it'll be one, 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 zero. And you can see that on these LEDs which are connected to them uh, on the circuit. So I can see it counting up in binary. Then our clever little Russian chip that um, takes the binary number and then lights up the Nixie tubes by switching on only one pin on this driver depending on what number it receives on the input and what that means is the pin will go to ground that cathode that it's connected to so there are uh, 10 of them in the Nixie tube remember 1 to 9 plus 0 will individually one at a time be dragged down to ground and therefore will light up and you can see uh, the anode right at the top here and that needs to go off to the high voltage power supply. So uh, at this stage, you might just ask yourself, why? Why did I want to build one of these? Well, I've always been interested in Nixie tubes, but um, we were on holiday in the Lake District and we decided to uh, take some DVDs with us because we actually had time to catch up on things like that. And I hadn't seen The Matrix for years and years and years. Um, so I watched The Matrix again and I love that sort of image on the computer screen of the coloured numbers falling down the screen. And I thought, well, what can I build that looks a bit like that? So I know it's not exactly uh, identical, but I thought this little uh, Nixie matrix display would do the trick. You might remember from the circuit diagram that there was a variable resistor in here to change the rate at which the 555 timer pulsed. Um, so we can have a quick look at that one. So um, I'm trying very hard not to electrocute myself with the 200 volts in the back. I've got my fingers here on the little um, variable resistor. And what I'll do is I'll give it a little bit of a twiddle and that's it going much, much faster. And then I'll slow it down. So it counts much more slowly and I can set it up for the sort of count rate I want um, in the back. I'm not sure if you can see it, uh, but there's a string of LEDs in there uh, counting away and they can count really rapidly or they can pulse really slowly. Um, and that's the um, binary counter ticking away. So I don't know what sort of rate I like, uh, but in the Matrix film, uh, when they had their display, um, that was going really rapidly. But of course, the numbers were falling down the screen as well. So I'm sure it won't have passed you by um, watching the video that at some parts in the video and uh, now you'll notice that one of the Nixie tubes is not lit. Um, yes, I'll, I'll just quickly explain that one. Um, it has a 200 volt power supply uh, in the back, as you know, and the trouble is as soon as the Nixie tube um, lights up, um, it conducts really well. So its resistance drops and the voltage across it drops. Um, and the Nixie tubes um, being a sort of mi mixture of sort of mechanical bits inside that are put together and the electrical bits uh, are such that they're not identical. So um, when the voltage drops, some of the tubes don't have enough voltage on them to get started. And um, usually the arrangement that I've built works perfectly well, but there are times when uh, one tube or two tubes will just not get going. I need to sort it out and make sure that we don't see that voltage drop happening rapidly across all the tubes. So some of them are sort of left lagging behind waiting for their 200 volts um, and that'll be a job for another time. But in general, I'm really pleased with how it came out. So I do hope you enjoyed that video of the making of my little Nixie tube matrix display. Uh, do forgive me for the fact that the odd tube doesn't work from time to time, but anyway, I'll be making another video soon and I look forward to seeing you then.